getting familiar with the 8055i MC CNC. As you know, the 8055i CNC is capable of working with G-code and conversational cycles. This video will demonstrate the conversational side of the control. Let's confirm we are on the conversational side of the control. If the screen looks like this, you are in the conversational side of the control. If it looks like this, you are on the G-code side of the control. To change between G-code and conversational mode, simply press Shift key followed by Escape key. Now that we are on the conversational side of the control, let's review the front panel and our main screen. In the upper right-hand corner, we have a full alphanumerical keyboard. You will notice that some of the keys are different shades of color. These keys are hot keys. When you find yourself in a cycle and you want to go directly to the spindle speed, simply press the S key. The cursor will then go directly to the first S command. Press it again and it will take you to the second S command if there is one. The same applies to the other shaded keys. The enter key is in yellow. Use the escape key to go back one step. Use the main menu key to return to the main menu. On the lower right hand side we have the cycle start and cycle stop buttons. To the left we have the feed rate override switch. This area is the spindle control. This rotary switch is used to select continuous jog, incremental jog, or to select the hand wheel mode. These keys are used to jog the axes. The USB port is used to transfer files to and from the control. We can also use the USB port to make a backup of the machine PLC program or parameters. The keys directly below and to the left of the LCD are the conversational icon cycles. To do a drilling operation, we press the drilling key. We can then combine a simple drilling cycle with a random drilling cycle, thus allowing to define an additional 12 holes. We can do the same with a simple pocket cycle. The same can be done with other cycles. We will go into further details on these operations later in the video. On the LCD, you see a large coordinate display and a small coordinate display. The large coordinates are the axis coordinates with respect to the part zero. The smaller coordinates are the axis coordinates with respect to machine zero. The S refers to the actual speed of the spindle while it is running if there is an encoder present on the spindle. If there is no encoder on the spindle, then it will display the theoretical spindle speed when the spindle is running. This area refers to the current programmed feed rate. When F is equal to zero, you are running at maximum jog feed rate. Located to the right of the program feed rate is the percentage of the feed rate override switch. For example, if we program a feed rate of 50 inches per minute and the feed rate override switch is at 50%, the axis will jog at 25 inches per minute. T1 refers to the current tool that is active. Below we have the tool change position. When doing a tool change position, the CNC will move the axes to these coordinates to allow you to change a tool. This is the program spindle speed. Directly below is the percentage of the spindle speed. In this area, we can tell if the spindle is stopped or confirm the turning direction of the spindle. This section displays the active spindle gear. To jog an axis, first make sure the feed rate override switch is not set to zero. Press the X minus to jog the tool in a negative direction. Press the X plus to jog the tool in a positive direction. To rapid traverse jog, simply jog any axis while simultaneously pressing the rapid traverse key at the same time. Release the rapid traverse key and it will return to the program feed rate and percentage selected. To do a tool change, press the T key, type the tool number desired, and then press the cycle start button. The CNC will now move to the tool change position and prompt you to do a tool change. Once you have physically changed the tool, you must press cycle start to confirm you are done with the operation. The CNC now displays the new active tool. To change the tool change position, again press the T key, then use the down arrow key to move to the X axis value. Type a new value for X, press the enter key to confirm, and move on to the Y axis value. Again, type a new value in Y or press the enter key to continue. Repeat the process for Z axis. To start the spindle, we first must program the desired spindle speed. 
press the S key followed by the desired spindle speed. In this case, we will type S500, followed by the cycle start button to activate. If your machine has gear ranges, confirm you are in the correct gear range and press Enter. To start the spindle direction, use the clockwise or counterclockwise keys. To stop the spindle, use the middle key. Another way to control the spindle is by using the ISO key. Press the ISO key and you will see a red bar appear. Type in M3 and press the cycle start button. The spindle is now turning in a clockwise direction. To change direction again, press the ISO key and type in M4 followed by the cycle start button. The spindle should now be turning in a counterclockwise direction. To stop the spindle, again press the ISO key and type in M5 followed by the cycle start button. The spindle should now stop. If your machine has an inverter, we can use the plus or minus keys to override the program spindle speed. It is possible to override the spindle speed by up to 50% of the program speed. To change the feed rate, press the F key followed by the new feed rate. In this case, we will use 30 inches per minute. Press enter to activate. Another way of doing this is by using the ISO key. Press the ISO key, type F50, followed by the cycle start button to activate. You can also use the ISO key to activate different G, M, S, T, and F codes or command any access to a desired position. Let's move on to homing the machine, reviewing our drawing, and defining the cycles to complete our demo part.